So then we're going to go off the slides a little bit now. Because we're just going to go over some review for a while. All right, so uh, what I just showed you, uh, we derived the continuity equation or, or conservation of mass equation, right? And it had a velocity in it. And so the next thing we did, and, and you know, what I'm doing here, we, we, we derived in, no, in the full uh, 1D diffusivity equation in notes last time and maybe briefly went over in the slides. So I'm just going over them. All this should, should be there, but we'll just go over it one more time. So uh, for the velocity then, we substituted in Darcy's law, right? We substitute Darcy's law into the uh, conservation of mass, and then we get the pressure diffusivity equation, or at least, you know, one version of it. Okay. So, in general, this is this is the pressure diffusivity equation, right? And then we went on and made some assumptions, and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna solve multiple variations uh, of this equation given different amounts of assumptions throughout the class, right? The one we sort of derived by hand is the simplest case when the fluid compressibility is near zero, very small, okay? So we, uh, we have the diffusivity equation there, or one version of it. Um, and then if we assume that the permeability is isotropic and homogeneous, we can, we can pull it out. I mean, this is one dimension, so it, isotropic doesn't really make sense. But if we assume it's, if it's homogeneous, meaning it's, what does homogeneous mean? It's not a function of space. Right? So if it's not a function of space, we can pull it outside that differential sign. Okay. So I know this says isotropic. That's more for in the three-dimensional case. Right? In one dimension, everything's isotropic. Okay. We talked about formation volume factor. So the formation volume factor um, is the ratio of the volume in reservoir conditions over standard conditions. Uh, and then it's the inverse for the density. So uh, the, the formation volume factor is the density in standard conditions divided by the density in reservoir conditions. And this comes about because we want to solve these equations for, you know, in the reservoir, but we typically do the measurements for the material properties in the laboratory under standard conditions. And when we talked about the formation volume factor uh, is going to be greater than one for oil, much less one for gas, and on the order of one for water. Okay. So then we substitute in the formation volume factor into the equation. Okay. And so we just replace, you know, replace the density in the continuity equation or in the diffusivity equation previous to that with the formation volume factor, and we get this, this equation here. And then we just start some manipulations, right? So we use the, the, the product rule on the left-hand side of the equation and the chain rule on the left-hand side to get it in this form, okay? I think when we actually did the derivation, we worked on that first, but it doesn't matter. We, we, we have these guys, okay? And you know, we just used the chain rule here. That, so this is like, um, uh, you know, like so up there, uh, one over B would be like uh, F and G, right? And so then the product rule is the, you know, the derivative of the first, which would be F one over B W. Uh, times g, and then plus the first uh, times the derivative of the second, right? So f g prime. So that's the product rule, and then the chain rule here. This would be like if this is f, okay? So then we have, uh, and this is a function of, of pressure, which is a function of x. Then we can say, you know, dp, df dp, dp dx is there, and then so then we have this one over the pressure, and then this is where this squared thing comes from, right? So I think I showed the steps when I did it by hand in a little more detail. 
Amen. But that puts, um, okay, so that's, that's on the left-hand side. Then on the right-hand side, uh, where we're dealing with time, then we also do some manipulations on the, using the chain rule and the product rule to get some things that look like almost like the rock compressibility and the fluid compressibility. Right? So uh, you know, th this is almost the rock compressibility. This is almost the fluid compressibility. And then we're just pull, add in, uh, you know, essentially we're just multiplying by one. Right, we we have like uh, you know BW over BW, but we pull one of the BWs inside, and then you have something that looks like the fluid compressibility, and so then you sub make those substitutions in. The total compressibility is the sum of the fluid compressibility and the rock compressibility. Right. So then we just make these substitutions in. And we get that equation on the top. And for a slightly compressible fluid, or when the compressibility is near zero, then that term is zero. Okay. And you know the the compressibility of the fluid uh, is is really small. Like it's it's on the order of uh, you know ten to the minus sixth. Okay. So. Uh, I'm sorry, the compressibility of water. We're talking about water. So for water and oil, this will always be the case. Maybe not for gas, right? But for water and oil, you can almost, that's always, for the most part, a good assumption. Um, in addition to CF being small, which, you know, it's, it's small enough in its own right that this is always, probably always a good assumption, but also your pressure gradient term in the reservoir, you know, far away from a source or a sink is also going to be small, right? I mean, you're, you don't have really steep pressure gradients just in the reservoir far away from wells, okay? And so the pressure gradient itself is small, and then you're squaring it. So now you have something small squared is even smaller times something small. So it, it's really a really good uh, approximation most of the time. All right? So then just grouping grouping some terms of our, of our simplified equation, uh, we get this 1, 1D diffusivity equation, okay, where we've grouped some terms, namely alpha is, is uh, these guys, uh, mobility. With, so I don't know if I use the Q, but Q is um, M over rho C. I don't, I don't know if I used that when I derived it. But Q is just M over rho C. Uh, and so then if you just group some terms, you, you can define this lambda, uh, which is the mobility, which is, is these guys, okay? Yeah. So it's defined there, the source term M over rho SC, all right? And so then in the absence of sources or sinks, we get the simplest equation, which is, in other contexts, we call this the heat equation. And so, again, you know, it's, you can sort of think of it, in, of course, in the absence of sources and sinks, that all of the sort of all of the physics are really tied up in alpha, and of course, then what your what your diffusing concentration is. So, in a, in, a, in porous media, your, your diffusing concentration is pressure, and, and all the physics are sort of tied up in the coefficient alpha. But if we just replace p with p then we can also solve a heat transfer problem where now your diffusing concentration is temperature and all the physics, you know, the thermal conductivity and everything else is tied up in the alpha term. 